Okay, so next we're going to hear from Luke Morton on why electrify everything. We've all been hearing that. So Luke's the co-founder and COO of IO Energy. They deliver low, lower bills and cleaner energy by helping homes and business to use daytime electricity when renewable generation peaks. I will let Luke take it from here. Thanks, Luke, you welcome. Hi everybody, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll just get straight into it. So today I'm gonna to tell you why you should electrify, uh, what you should aspire to when you're doing that, and how you can get the best out of it. So why should you electrify? You should electrify because electricity is cleaner, it's cheaper, and it's smarter. It's cleaner because all electric homes have better air quality. Uh, it's cleaner because renewable electricity does not release carbon emissions. And it's cleaner because electricity is governed by more stringent environmental standards than alternative fuels. So let me break that apart. A mantra of sustainable homes is we don't burn things here. Burning is wasteful and it releases particulates that you will ultimately breathe in. You might be uh, familiar with this and you might be accustomed to this because this is how many homes have been designed over the decades and centuries even. But uh, you don't have to accept it anymore. So I'll just make that point. Um, it's going to um, improve the air that you breathe. It's going to reduce um, the prevalence of asthma in your children. Many things like this. Secondly, renewable electricity does not release carbon emissions. I'm not going to labour that point too much. I think everybody who's sitting here will understand that. But what people might not have thought of is that alternative schemes, um, alternative fuels are not governed in the same way that electricity is. So when you buy electricity, it tends to be... Uh, a bundled cost. You don't realise it, by, you buy many things at once. And one of the things that you're buying is the government's environmental schemes that uh, incentivise the production of more, ele more electricity and specifically more renewable electricity. But conversely, gas has no such schemes. When you buy gas, you're not buying into renewable energy targets that are helping to, to um, clean our economy and, uh, and improve our planet. My second point was that electricity is cheaper. Electricity is cheaper because, quite simply, electricity is cheaper than, than other fossil fuels. Also, electric appliances are more efficient, which means you use less, and that's cheaper. And finally, all electric homes require less infrastructure. So electricity is cheaper than other fuels because it is, a, um, is blended from many other things. So yes, we use fossil fuels to make electricity, but it is also blended with uh, renewable sources like wind and solar which are amongst the, the, the cheapest generation sources that humanity has ever produced. So um, on average, you know, that, that cost is going to come lower, even though you, you know, at the moment you might be seeing that market prices are going up, and I'll touch on that later. Um, and it will especially be cheaper if you use it at the right time of day. Also, electric appliances are more efficient. So when you're burning something, you can only ever be, at most, 100% efficient in the release of that energy. But, and trust me on this, you will not be. You might be more like 30% efficient. Whereas some electric appliances are as much as 400% efficient. For every one unit of input that they take, they can release four units of energy. And it's a, it's a little trick that I'll explain to you more later. And finally, all electric homes require less infrastructure. I personally have an all electric home. And as a result, I don't have to pay to maintain the gas grid. I'm not paying a fixed daily supply charge for two separate networks. So that's saving me automatically a few hundred dollars a year. My third point is why are all electric homes smarter? And the reason is because electric appliances can do more, because they're safer, and because they're more programmable. They can do more because um, they, you know, unlike, unlike gas, which tends to just heat and combust, um, electric appliances um, such as this right here can both heat and cool. It can be changed by mode. So you're going to get more for less in that sense. You don't need two separate systems. They're safer um, because they can be designed in um, interesting ways that, uh, well, let me, just, let me put it this way. Uh, do you think a home with more fires inside it is safer than a home with fewer? You know, when you, even with, even with cooking, electric cooking, induction um, cooktops these days, you can quite safely put your hand on that and, and your children uh, will not be at risk of burning because of the nature of that technology. Also, electric appliances are more programmable. These days, electric appliances tend to be integrated with electronics and that makes them smarter and so you can do better things with that. So that's my first point. 
I'm going to move on to what you should aspire to as you electrify. So energy sustainability includes three principles, economy, efficiency, and flexibility. Energy economy is about using less energy in general, in aggregate. Energy efficiency is about getting more for every unit of energy you use, more benefit for less. And flexibility is about using energy when it's cheapest and it's cleanest. Energy economy is largely built on the principles of uh, building science. Energy efficiency is largely built upon electrification. Um, so you might use more electricity, but you're going to use less energy overall. And uh, energy flexibility is uh, about using energy when it's cleanest. Correction, um, it's largely achieved through um, time shifting uh, the, the time that you use energy. So taking your energy use out of the evening uh, when it might be catered to by gas power plants and into the daytime when it's going to be catered to largely by renewables. Very helpfully, these things interact in a, in a virtuous cycle. So economy, having a, an energy efficient home is going to make it easier for you to change the time that you run your heating and cooling because that air won't be released into the atmosphere so quickly. As a result, you'll be able to get cheaper electricity and the savings that you generate from that cheaper electricity, you can then feed back into buying new and more modern electric appliances that are more efficient overall. So those are the three things you need to consider as you aspire towards your electrification goals. And finally, I'm going to tell you the how, how to make the most of electrification. And I'm going to use a, a model here, six different things. First, you should electrify your energy use. Second, you should use energy when it's less expensive. Third, you should find better contracts. Fourth, you should install alternative energy sources. Fifth, you should improve your building fabrics. And sixth, you should install efficient and flexible appliances. And if you can't do all of these things, that's fine. But these are the things that you can do. So when it comes to electrifying your energy use, I would say get rid of petrol, get rid of diesel, LNG, wood, fossil gas. Um, where to start? Well, the, the quickest and easiest things to electrify are typically heating air and water. Um, you may already have gas heaters in your home and a reverse cycle air conditioner. Well, all you need to do is stop using the gas heater because that reverse cycle air conditioner has a heating mode. Also, uh, it's not so hard to uh, take that gas uh, hot water system off your, off your wall or your property and install an electric hot water system. Uh, this is where I'd start because heating gas, uh, correction, heating and cooling air and water uh, tend to be some of the, the largest energy demands in any home. Um, some of us perhaps you know, have electric vehicles now and that's going to be another significant um, energy demand that for 80% of the population or for most of the population it's, it's air and water. All right, use energy when it's less expensive. This is at the core of what IO Energy does as an energy retailer. So although most people are charged a single rate for electricity at all times of day, it's not actually the case that electricity is, this, uh, is the same cost to supply at all times of day. It changes a lot um, by season, by weather, um, by simple market dynamics. And, but invariably, it's less expensive during the daytime because that's when the renewable mix is highest. So uh, to that point about how much it costs to charge an EV, uh, I actually just recently bought an EV with an 82 kilowatt hour battery. And if I charge it at the right time um, at my property, it will cost me $7.38 to charge that on an IO Energy electricity plan. So thank you. I, I won't clap because it just feel like patting myself on my back. But anyway, anyway this, is, um, this is your problem now. If you're currently paying a single rate for electricity, it's your problem now, but it's going to be your retailer's problem later when you leave them to somebody will, that will offer it to them uh, to you cheaper. And it's quite easy to do this. You, know, you, can, um, you can put the delay switch on your white goods and it will run after you leave for work. You can, um, you can put your air conditioner on a little timer program your, your, your pool pump, your, um, your hot water system, all of these things are quite simple to program. Third, find and negotiate better contracts. Well, squeaky wheels get greased, so it pays to go looking. 
A good place to start is the government's Energy Made Easy website. Um, although I will say it's worth noting it's not perfect. Um, it uses um, some assumption-based calculations. It's not necessarily going to give you the perfect answer. Um, they tend to just compare the prices and they don't take into account the, the notion that you might change your energy use. In fact, they don't even, it doesn't even take into account like when you use energy. Um, it just sort of at best takes into account the, the aggregate volume of energy that you use. So if you'd like to know more about um, the, the shape of your energy use over, over a day, a typical day, feel free to come out, reach to us. Um, if you have a smart meter, we'll be able to determine that immediately. Um, if, you, if you don't, we will, we'll lack the data, but at least we can have a discussion. Next, install alternative energy sources. So um, solar and battery systems are great options for reducing your costs, so long as you buy something that is appropriately priced, sized, and oriented. So the solar industry to this point has um, been a great success in South Australia. Um, but because it's based on a sales type of model, uh, there's obviously an incentive to sell the largest system at the greatest price possible, um, and the way that that has typically been justified to consumers is that um, if you orient it north and you produce a lot of energy, you can export this and you're going to recoup the cost in, in exports. But, um, you know, you should, you should be looking for a fair price. You should be right-sizing that installation for your, for your own personal needs because uh, you will save a lot more money by using that solar rather than giving it away. And, and finally, um, this approach is actually leading um, to uh, a bit of a problem with supply and demand at the moment. So, and this is why solar feed-in tariffs are coming down so rapidly, because so much energy is being exported, but not as much is being demanded at the moment. And as a result, that's why you should also think about your orientation. Yes, with a north-facing north installation, you will generate a greater volume of energy, but if you have something that's west-facing and east-facing and caters more to the to morning demand and, and evening demand that tends to be higher, well, then the value of that energy is going to be slightly higher. All right, improving your building fabrics. It makes sense to fill the holes in the bucket before you try to fill the bucket. So if you have a drafty house, try to patch some of those drafts. It's by far the easiest and, and cheapest way to start to create a more energy efficient home. And uh, it's something that you can do yourself um, after a little trip to Bunnings. Other than the Adelaide Sustainable Building Network, uh, which is a great source for professionals who will be able to do this uh, to, the, to the nth degree, um, I can also recommend a Facebook group called My Efficient Electric Home, which is a large group of passionate amateurs who will offer tips and tricks for how to make your home more energy efficient. And my final point, install efficient and, and flexible appliances. So you don't need a fully automated smart home, um, but it does help to have devices with some basic intelligence, such as the ability to be programmed based on time or to respond to temperature. Also, you don't necessarily have to replace an appliance to make this happen. There are um, devices that can retrofit some of these appliances. So, for example, uh, I recently wired a little um, Internet of Things device into my electricity meter board, which suddenly allowed, allowed me to, to program my old electric hot water system from my phone. And uh, similarly, there are devices out there that um, are actuators. And, and it, well, how would I say it? It's like a smart finger. So if, you, if, you're, if your white goods don't have um, any timer functions, you can just put something over the, the power button and um, from your phone, or let's say press, you know, according to a, a timer. So there's quite a lot of things you can do in that respect. Um, and, it, you know, it maybe it costs you 20 bucks a pop. So that's the end of my allotted time, and I am, I'm glad that I managed to fit everything in. All right, that was very good. And you should definitely check out Luke's website. Look up io ioenergy.com.au um, for way more information. Um, cleaner, cheaper, smarter, energy economy, efficiency, flexibility, a lot, of, a lot of things to cover in that presentation, so thank you very much. <laughs>